know me. Everybody say that they know me. They own me. See me on the cover of a Vogue and they clone me. We cannot be friends because I like being lonely. I'm a boss. Tell them not today. Swerving on these chickens. Cluck out my lane. I'm a boss. Out my way. I just do everything. Okay, so tell us. What exactly do you do now with Spanish translation, and how, what is it that you help businesses accomplish? As a consultant, um, I help uh, businesses with uh, translation of uh, documents, uh, legal documents, um, uh, acquisition uh, documents. I also uh, do uh, conference calls, okay. conference call uh, translations, um, and yes, I believe that going to Puerto Rico at such an early age and being exposed to the Spanish there and how people actually speak Spanish there has helped me to be able to um, kind of move around in this in this uh, field of consulting. And be able to probably really bridge the gap between the person who maybe took the high school and college Spanish, you know, and then you know, the, per- and the, the people that obviously have grown up in a mm-hmm. Spanish-speaking speaking culture their mm-hmm. entire life. I'd say there is quite that gap that mm-hmm. most people can't bridge that you can 100% fill in i think that's amazing yeah because one thing i like to do when i'm when i'm uh, translating is if it's a let's say like a phone call and this person is to say like from mexico the spanish in mexico is very different from the spanish in puerto rico or from the other so i always like to kind of feel and you know just ask them you know where you're from you know blah blah blah. so that way when it comes to translating i need to make sure that i use the words that they will understand that's very important you know i don't think there's a lot of people that think about that a lot of people probably think spanish is spanish is spanish right so they do not think about the fact that okay mexican spanish is not the same as puerto rican spanish is not the same Mm -hmm. as you know spain you know so being able to know where that person's from is huge and the fact that you can kind of take back from that and say okay well this person is from here or here or here and be able to kind of fill in that gap I think that that is that's a great asset to a lot of companies. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the Spanish population population in America now is is quite large, and there's also a lot of Spanish speaking people that are involved in business. How do you think that that impacts businesses as a whole? Do you feel that you're at, you're an asset to these businesses to be able to help them kind of bridge that gap between not only a business to a client, but even business to their own employees. How do you think that that falls into place? To me, it's extremely important uh, to be able to have someone, if that is the case, which uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, with, you know, with America having such a large population of Spanish-speaking people, uh, it's very important uh, for, let's say, business to be able to offer, let's say, those kinds of services because you, know, you never know who's going to who's going to come across and okay I can't help you because I don't speak your language well Mm -hmm. you know what I have someone here who could help me this is a potential business a potential customer a potential client that I can that could take now because I have someone who actually can help me with that Uh, to me I think it's extremely important in the beginning when you're growing when I was growing up I didn't really give it too much importance because to me it was a second nature yeah but now that I'm an adult and I'm working... Are you a real adult, though? <laughs> yeah. Are you a I adult? Am. I am, I am. <laughs> you have Peter Pan syndrome. That's what we really want to know. That's what we brought you here for. <laughs> but no, I, I notice now uh, it makes sense what people used to tell me when I was growing up. Yeah. It's like it's a great thing that you have this these skills to translate and both ways. You know, exactly, ways. yeah. Because uh, you'll be an asset, you know, eventually to... To somebody and well, you're uh, able to kind of come in and make a level playing field. So you know, one person can't take advantage of another person because of just the gap. Even again, mm-hmm. even if they've taken like me, I took high school Spanish. I I can terribly say a few things, and I can. I can I can I can translate a few things and pretty much know what the person's talking about. But to be able to actually get into a business situation and be able to articulate anything that's going on, that's not gonna happen. And I think that's where many people kind of fall. And I really think that, you know, when you're speaking, you know, in a business setting, the legality that's involved, it's very important to know for both parties, you know, what is it that you're getting into because it doesn't matter how solid a contract is. If you if there's like a language barrier and you have not making taken every single 
single opportunity to be able to make sure that other party understands what they're signing or, you know, it's, it's not a legal contract. So that that's a very important part of any kind of business transaction to make sure that other person legally has to be able to understand what it is that they are agreeing to. So that's where, you know, again, talking about just the sheer number of people who speak Spanish as their native language, you know, having a Spanish translator is an asset to any business, in my opinion. Absolutely. So that being said, you know, maybe every company is not necessarily equipped to staff a full-time translator. Maybe they get the occasional, you know, Spanish-speaking client, but maybe they don't have a a 40-hour-a-week need for a Spanish translator. And that's where your business comes in, to be able to um, offer on a consultant basis to be able to contract in those services. You know, maybe you only need it every once in a while. It's a great asset to be able to have somebody like you to be able to you know, bring in those services. Yes, I, I, I believe you're right. Um, I don't uh, necessarily think that it's something that a company ne- would necessarily need to have there uh, 24-7 uh, or, you know, or 40 you know, hours a week or whatever you work. Uh, but it is good for a company to have someone that they could say, hey, I have this emergency, there's this employer or something, you know, that I have that, uh, you know, that came in and he does not, you know, know Spanish, English, and he has an, he got into an accident or something. Or even if it's as easy as a phone call, it's like, look, I got this conference call with some, you know, vendor from Mexico, from Nicaragua, Colombia. Okay, so let's get on the phone and, you know, let's help translate. And that's a good point. I never thought about the fact of having, like, an emergency situation, but that that's also mm-hmm. a good point to have somebody that you can call on if you have an emergency situation mm-hmm. um, that you really need somebody to kind of be able to articulate what that person's saying. Um, I never even – that wasn't even something. I was more thinking, like, contracts and stuff, but that's a good point. Mm-hmm. You know, just being able to contract someone in that you have to be able to say, okay, well, this is kind of covering my bit. It's almost like an insurance in some ways, mm-hmm. you know, to say, okay, well, you know, if I have somebody that comes, you know, on board as an employee or that I'm dealing with in a business situation, this is somebody that I can call on to help me figure out what's going on. Yeah. That's a huge asset to be able to have that connection. And then, unfortunately, too, you have um, – there uh, there are many people that, uh, you know, that are here that don't have any, let's say, like health insurance, you know, mm-hmm. and, and – you can't, let's say, for example, something happens and they're like, no, I don't want to go to the hospital because I don't. Well, you know, if you have someone to explain to them, it's like, okay, this is what, you know, this these are the rules and this mm-hmm. is what I need to do. I understand that perhaps you don't have any medical insurance. So having someone to be able to kind of clear that up or um, explain that to someone who does not understand the language 100%, to me, I think is extremely important. Uh, and I feel that's where I come in. When you're in these situations, kind of explain to us, you know, how do you approach maybe the emergency situation compared to maybe the business situation? Can you kind of walk us through on how that is? Let's say in in a scenario where there's someone that needs help in a hospital setting, you have to be able to do uh, – you have to be able to be both professional and uh, – have uh, em- empathy uh, mm-hmm. when you're in the situation where you know the person's trans is is telling me okay what's going on and uh, it's it's been my experience that the person that's there obviously is not 100 percent you know yeah. uh, in their let's say uh, th- th- themselves because yeah. of the just because of the nature of the situation I have to be very you know um, I have to be em- empathetic I have mm-hmm. to you know it, it kind of in some way get involved so that way when it's being translated to me I could tell them exactly what's going on but I have to be I want to make sure that I say it in a in a nice in a nice way not just like oh well you know he's gonna die tomorrow yeah, no exactly. you know you have to have some kind of uh, <laughs> how would you call this a uh, tact yeah it, it, to be able and in order to do that you kind of need to uh, bury yourself into that kind into of, you know kind of into the situation yeah it's very important because that way then you could alf- offer comfort to the person too okay you know this is what's going on Everything, you know, so far is okay, but this is what could happen. And I don't know. This is maybe a segue here, but I, I've been told I have several friends that are also Spanish-speaking, but they're from Mexico. Maybe this is just a Mexican um 
thing. But they, a lot of them said that, in, you know, whenever they're stressed out or, or injured or whatever, a lot of them tend to kind of revert back and they don't even want to speak English. You know, they end up just kind of really reverting back to speaking their what they're comfortable at, which is <clears throat> Spanish. They're comfortable with Spanish. If they're, you know, super stressed out and they're not thinking straight and they're just whatever, it's like they don't even want to think about how to translate that into English. That's not So they end up just... So if that's the situation, even if they themselves are bilingual, you know, at that moment, they're going back to what they natively learned originally. Is that true or is that kind of a wise tale? Well, or just maybe with that one family that told me that. I mean, it's he po- said, she said. It's possible <laughs> because of the fact that uh, uh, you're in a, an emotional state at that mm-hmm. point and you're going to – you need to you need to vent. You need to let that emotion come out and – you see, I see it as you – people either think in English mm-hmm. or they think in Spanish. Okay. So if in this situation you're thinking in Spanish, the first thing that's going to come out is in Spanish. Okay. You, you don't have time to, to translate in, yeah, in exactly. your mind. That makes you know, sense. Switch it from Spanish to English and then say it. Mm-hmm. So uh, – and granted, I mean uh, I speak for myself and for people that I know. Hispanics are normally, we're, you know, we're very um, expressive type people, mm-hmm. and you know, we, uh, you know, we, we feel deeply, uh, deeply. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we show. I don't say we feel, deep, but we show. We it. show our emotion. Yeah, yeah. wear your heart on it's, your sleeve. It, right? exa- yeah. Exactly. Right. So that mm-hmm. that sometimes that that could be like a double edged sword. Yeah, it's like, okay, I, see that. I, didn't, I didn't mean yeah. to yeah. to say this or that, but uh, now, to answer your question, I, I honestly, I. I could I could see how that could happen. So, with that being said, you know, in a stressful situation, what language do you think in? Because that's very intriguing to me. I think in both languages now. Okay. Yeah. Back uh, before um, when I was uh, a kid, it was English, mainly English. I didn't uh, even bother to think in Spanish. But now I find myself thinking both. Okay. I dream in English. Okay. I get upset in Spanish. (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay. You know, it's a, I'd, I'd say maybe a psychiatrist would have a field day with that one. But oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, okay. So as far as taking that to, you know, the business side of things, you know, what does that look like if you're walking a client through maybe, like you said, an acquisition or some type of legal contract? You know, what is your process is to be able to make sure that both parties are represented? Like I mentioned before, it, to me, it's very important to be able to know both parties. Mm-hmm. It's important for me to know, uh, you know, party A and party B. Mm-hmm. You know what? You know what are you looking for, and what do you want from party from yeah. this party? To me, that is like the ba- the basics right there. I, I I want to know. I need to know who these people are, and I need to know what you know who, who these people are here, and and I need to understand exactly what what is their goal. Okay. Because if I don't, uh, by understanding what their goal is, it'll be easier for me to translate and to be able to get that point across to let's say uh, party you know the party that makes sense. the parties involved. To me, it's extremely important to be able to to um, kind of bathe myself in all the information that I could get because sometimes translation is just not word for word. Exactly. You need so to be able to know. You need to know what the end game is. What you're is. talking about. Yeah, you need to exactly. Know, you, need to, you, do, you really need to know what you're talking about yeah. here. You know, if you explain something, you translate something, it's got to make sense to me. And, too. and like you said before, who you're talking to is also important. So, mm-hmm. you know, depending on what area they're from can make a big difference on how you're going to articulate and translate that. Exactly right. Luckily for me, um, and that's when the Span- where the Spanish soap operas come into play. Uh, I've <laughs> no, been able. To- <laughs> I, I base my education on the Spanish soap operas. I've been what able was to call it again. I've been able to pick up. A, uh, <laughs> Um, the dialects from these different uh, Spanish-speaking countries. Yeah. In Mexico, the Spanish is more like a... Eh. Yeah. In Puerto Rico, it's a more cut-up type Spanish. Uh, Argentina is a more like... Eh, che, you know? Yeah. And Spain, it's like I could pick up... I could pick up where someone's at... Uh, where, where, someone, where someone is from based on... Uh, on their uh, on the way they talk, I could recognize these dialects, and actually, I could, I could blend into that too, and I, so that way I know what to say. So, let's say for okay. example, your client is from Colombia, mm-hmm. and you're obviously you, your Spanish is 
very little. Yeah, let's go ahead and make fun of me on my terrible Spanish. What was it we did? Your one Spanish time? is garbage. We somewhere, where were we at this one time that I tried my hand at my terrible Spanish that I knew from back in the day, and I said something. I don't remember if you remember this because you had had a few drinks, but we won't. Oh talk yeah, about blame that. it on me. Okay. It was you, but um, I said something, and you made fun of me. Because of what I said, apparently translated to something else. Um, because I was doing I, apparently Mexican Spanish, and in Puerto Rico, it translated to something really bad. So you're saying that <laughs> I, I had a lot of drinks, so I wouldn't remember. So why are you asking me? Because ¿Por qué, I Maria? To talk about ¿Por, qué? It, so ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? I don't know why. I'm just okay. telling you. I just wanted to talk about that fact. <laughs> if, I can't remember. It was something that I can't remember what it translated to a female anatomy. I don't remember what it was, you know, the. Mutaja downstairs, if it Probably, was the upstairs yeah. girlfriends. I'm not sure which one it was, but Twins, it was one of those. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was one of those. And I said something thinking I was saying something super smart. And I felt pretty confident in myself until you and Ray started laughing at me. Yeah. I, I don't remember. You don't remember that because I told you. Just a bit. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I digress. All right. <laughs> so if a business owner or someone in charge is looking for a Spanish translator, what is the best way for them to find the one they need? Are you are, are they more likely to find a good fit in someone that's native born or maybe someone that actually has lived in the US and possibly lived in a Spanish speaking country or someone that has maybe taken a lot of education in that area, you know, what would be the way that they could take the steps to find maybe the best fit for them? Do you have some input on that? Knowledge. Okay. Uh, because I, let's say, for example, if I were, I was born in Puerto Rico and I speak English, but that's all I do. Uh, I have no studies. I have no knowledge of anything. That would be kind of difficult for me to stand here and let's say translate for for let's say a business. Okay. I mean, again, it goes it goes down to like knowing exactly what you what they are talking about, having the knowledge of what is going to be translated. Um, so I don't necessarily think it has to or feel that it has to be someone who's born there or someone who wasn't. Okay. Uh, to me, it has to do with um, the knowledge and the capabilities of this person. Okay. Um, like in my case, I have a degree in, in business uh, administration. So there's a lot of things that you know I'm familiar with because I've worked, I studied, and I've worked with. So it's pretty simple for me to kind of just kind of go back and okay, yeah, that's this, that's this, and okay. that's that. So I know how to uh, so that way I know how to translate it the way it should. All right. So so what you're saying is, I mean, it's great to have that knowledge base on the language, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you know one is better than the other as long as you know the dialects in place and their education on the language is in place. But even more so, it's very important that if they are translating business documents, they really need to have that knowledge in a business arena, which I can understand that one. It, it, it does help. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that people who don't uh, don't have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends also on the uh, the complexity of the transactions that are being done. I, I can see that. I can see there being, um, again, almost another language barrier coming up if they don't understand, okay, well, what is that word? Because I've never heard that word, and how mm -hmm. is that used into play here? Because yeah. they don't understand that business setting. Exactly. You know, right. almost using a business as another, you know, language per se. I can understand that being an issue. Because there's been times where I've I've translated, and they've said a word in Spanish, and I, I have to ask, ask them, Exactly. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you know what that because I've never heard of that word before. And then when they tell me, I'm like, okay, now I know. So then I could tell them, okay, give them the proper word in English, and the same thing in, from English to Spanish. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is this word? What exactly do you mean by this? Mm -hmm. So you tell me, so that way, instead of translating just the word, I could explain it to them in Spanish. Because mm -hmm. um, you can either translate word for word, or you can translate as explaining exactly what. Ex this explicit person explicit expression exactly yeah. and to me that to me is the most effective way of when it comes to like business type translation I think it is anyway because yeah. well I mean this is again coming from my really limited sad 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 Spanish but I only I can tell you this word that I learned in high school means this word well apparently not in Puerto Rican but we won't talk about that but um but I cannot like if somebody was to to say a complete phrase I you know I'm not going to know 
how to be able to put that into anything. So I think that it's super important for somebody to understand the native language as well as understand what it is, the subject that they're talking to, be able to kind of put that into play into one fluid, you know, sentence, paragraph, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know uh, from speaking with some other people that, you know, when you're dealing with legal documents, there are some words that there's no translation for. How do you handle situations like that? In a situation like that, what I do or what I have to do is actually explain uh, explain to the person, I- explain or, or give the definition of the word. Okay. Because it's it's it, I mean it's true there are there are certain words that you, that don't have a literal translation uh, from you know either language right so if I know exactly what it's you know what it means then I could just stand there and explain to them okay yeah to explain it, them the whole definition the whole okay. definition uh, again that is that would be that is my approach that would be my approach and that's been my approach that would make sense to me i mean if i'm not understanding what a word means and i mean let's be honest i mean i speak english and sometimes i'm looking at an english where you're going what the heck does that even mean so i mean you know you better bet your booty that's going to happen in a language that i don't know you know what i mean so you know that's very that's a that i think that is a great approach on trying to explain okay well i'm not only giving you you know what the word means but i'm going to kind of actually you know define this for you this is what this looks like you know mm-hmm. i'm going to give you the full approach to this to make sure that you fully understand this i think that's a, a, a great way to um foster that trust that you need when you're doing translation because again I, i've never been in a bilingual situation like that but i would think if i'm if i you know am speaking english and i'm going to you know a different country whatever country and and they're not speaking my native language and i'm supposed to do some type of business transaction i have no idea what they're talking about mm-hmm. I'm going to be pretty nervous about that. I mean, I am. Let's be honest. I'm not going to know what they're saying. Am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to get sued? If Am I getting taken? you got to be very careful what you're you know, what Yeah. You're so to be able to have somebody that is like, okay, well, they're on my side because they understand both languages and they can 100% tell me, you know, what is this being? They're able to kind of define this for me so I'm able to feel more confident about whatever it is that I'm deciding to do because I understand it 100%. That is a huge asset, not only to me as somebody who's maybe going to do the business transaction, but also to the client who's trying to have me do that. Yeah, I like the word hyperbole. Uh, I had to actually look it up because I honestly did not quite know what it was. Meant. So let's say, for example, if that word were to be thrown around in a in some kind of you know business uh, environment or some kind of uh, deal translation uh, uh, meeting. Yeah. I would have to actually kind of yeah look it up, look it up, and so that way I could explain. Yeah. So I could explain, I could explain, and I could explain it to them. That makes I don't think sense. there's anything wrong with that. No, there's not. Um, I mean, there's nothing to say. I mean, honestly, you know, I don't think anybody can tell you the definition of every single word in their language. Because <laughs> <I can't>. <laughs> to me, the point of translating yeah. is to make sure that the that both parties understand exactly one hundred percent what. Is going on. That's the end goal, and I can yes. completely see that. None of this, you know, like it's saying, you know, half truths here and half truths mm-hmm. there. It's like you got to know exactly what is being said. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. What if I was to say, you know what, I don't need a Spanish translator. I'm just going to copy paste this document over into Google Translate. What would you have to say to them? Would you give me that paper to grade it? Because <laughs> I would love to give you. Some feedback. A big, uh, yeah. yeah, big, yeah. What, what grade? A big F for feedback. <laughs> big F for feedback. That bad? <laughs> so can you explain what what are the what are the problems? Explain to somebody that really doesn't understand because obviously they don't speak the, uh, the language. The problem, uh, not that I'm against these translators because they do. I mean, they do help. But to me, I don't believe in using them to translate documents, uh, you know, long sentences, uh, complicated business type uh, uh, material because of the fact that it's going to want to translate things literally. And in Spanish, we have certain things. They say, for example, you say good morning, good afternoon. Uh, in Spanish, it's buenos dias, buenas tardes. Um Buenas noches, uh, good night. But then there's certain uh, certain words that that are said backwards. And at this, I can't even think of an example right now. <laughs> That's how that goes. 
<laughs> it's been a long day. But, uh, you know, we're, what you do is you say it's said backwards. So when it translates, it's going to translate it backwards into English. And that's that's a, that's been like the main problem I've seen with these translators. With the translators. Aside from the fact that it's some of the words, it's like, oh my god, no, this is not what you're trying to say. <laughs> you <laughs> have to kind of be careful. You have to. So be does careful. it take it and translate it word for word? You think? I believe so. Yes, and I think that's and I think that's where the problem uh, lies. Okay. Yeah. So if if someone was to do something like that and you ended up getting that document to give your feedback on are you able to tell that they used some type of translator totally yeah, yeah. dead giveaway I'm, I'm pretty anal when it comes to you know i'll sit there and watch tv and i'm like uh-oh uh that was not right yeah, yeah. so apparently even when they're scripting television shows yeah using it's Google like translator. oh shoot they missed something here uh, no i yeah I, I could definitely tell I'm not going to lie. There's been times when I've used it, but then I've yeah. uh, just just to get like a general sense of it. But then I go back in there and then I correct it. Um, if it's a large document, yeah. I mean, I just don't use that and, and say, okay, here, here you go. No, I could use it as a ba- as a basis, and then I just go in there and I read it, and Fine then I start correcting. And correcting exactly right. Yeah. Favorites. <laughs> you better, better tell them who's the boss, me. 